I've always wanted to visit India, but if I do, I'll make sure to refer to this list. Make sure to subscribe and ring that bell to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Anyways, let's go. Number 10, flying a kite. No, that's not a euphemism. Get your mind out of the gutter. The majority of people enjoy flying kites, especially during Makar Sankranti, but without a license, flying a kite is prohibited in India. You require a license to operate an aircraft according to the Indian Aircraft Act 1934. Any machine that may derive support in the atmosphere from reaction of the air, including balloons, airships, kites, gliders, and flying machines, as defined by the act, is considered to be an aircraft. Negligent kite flying is punishable by up to a $10,000 fine or a two-year prison sentence. Number nine, littering. In India, littering is a widespread problem that almost everyone has participated in at some point. Throwing a bottle after drinking water or a chocolate wrapper while eating could count as minor examples. According to section 278 of the Indian Penal Code or the IPC, littering is prohibited and is considered a health hazard. In India, a person who is caught littering in a public area may be fined up to $500. And if you want my opinion, I think you should bump the fine up, because what's stopping you? Number 8. Spitting in public. A typical sight on Indian roadways is people spitting in the open, particularly those who chew tobacco or beetle leaf. The outbreak caused the Union Home Ministry to make spitting a serious offense under the Stringent Disaster Management Act, even though it was previously unlawful under municipal legislation in the majority of towns. Spitting in public is punishable by up to a year in prison, a fine, or both, according to Section 51B of the Disaster Management Act. Number 7. Buying Licks in Maharashtra the only state in India that mandates a permission in order to own, consume, or transport beverages is Maharashtra. It allows you to store 12 units of drinks and consume them privately. It is only available to those who are over the age of 25, 21 for beer or wine. Without a permit, transporting beverages is punished by a $50,000 fine or up to five years in jail. In Maharashtra, India, chewing gum is actually also prohibited for both personal use and commercial selling. This law was put into place to keep public spaces clean and prevent people from smearing gum on walls, pavements, and other surfaces. This may seem like a drastic measure, but it has actually led to less chewing gum trash throughout the state. In fact, a few individuals have noted that the ban has raised demand in mints and mouthwash as alternatives. However, it is still only a specific rule in Maharashtra at this time. The chewing gum ban has sparked some discussion about the balance between individual rights and the greater good. Number six, loud music. We frequently play music at weddings or parties without considering how it might be hurting those nearby. In accordance with Right to Life Article 21 of the Indian Constitution, every citizen has the right to a decent environment, right to live peacefully, right to sleep at night, and a right to have leisure, which are all necessary ingredients for the right to life. The Supreme Court of India ruled in 2005 that loudspeakers could not be used between the hours of 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. Playing loud music during this time can result in a fine of one lakh rupees or five years in prison. Number five, no Bob Marley. To prevent the dissemination of certain publications harmful to young persons, the law was put into effect. A publication that tends to corrupt a young person by depicting violence or cruelty or incidents of a repulsive or horrible nature is harmful. Words like revolting and dreadful in the opinion of many are vague and subject to arbitrary interpretation and consequently lead to widespread discretion and serve as an excuse for harassment. For instance, police in the southern state of Kerala conducted raids on stores selling Bob Marley t-shirts on the justification that they encouraged children to consume this one wonderful leafy green. Store owners were prosecuted with violating the law. Number 4. No Letters According to the statute, only the federal government has the exclusive privilege of conveying by post from one place to another for the majority of letters. Several exceptions exist, one of which is particularly strange. Letters sent by a private friend in his way, journey, or travel to be delivered by him to the person to whom they are directed without hire, reward or other profit or advantages for receiving, carrying, or delivering them. This legislation is broken by India's flourishing courier sector, which sends documents instead of letters. Number three, don't collect salt. 
The law imposes a cess on salt producers at a rate of 14 paisa, or 2 cents, per 40 kilograms on every salt produced in a private or state-owned salt mill. This tax is levied for unique administrative costs. A legislation places a marginal tax on salt, but it is expensive to collect. After deducting the cost of collection, the revenues are used to pay for labor, welfare, research, and salt making costs. The tax generated $538,000 in revenue in 2013 to 14, which was over half of the cost of collecting it. According to the Delhi based Center for Civil Society, the removal of this act and tax will have minimal impact on the government's budget because receipts are so low. A 1978 high level salt inquiry committee's recommendation to abolish the tax was based on the fact that its annual collection was very small and that its entire cost of collection was greater than half of its total revenue. The recommendation has not yet been made. Although private businesses in India generate 92% of the country's salt, the Indian Salt Service, which has 800 people working for it, controls the salt trade. Number two, don't collect treasure. Treasure is precisely defined in the law as anything of any value hidden in the soil and is only worth 10 rupees, 16 cents or 10 pence. According to the law, the finder of such treasure is required to notify the top local official of the nature and amount or approximate value of such treasure and the place where it was found. The share of such treasure shall vest in her majesty if the finder fails to turn over the loot to the authorities. It's important to keep in mind that the British evacuated India in 1947. So the Her Majesty part doesn't really make sense and it's kind of an antiquated law. Number one, no PDA. You should be aware that public displays of affection are not permitted in India or when visiting the country. According to section 294 of the Indian Penal Code, it is illegal to disturb bystanders through obscene conduct and offenders risk up to three months in jail or a fine. The term obscene acts is not defined by law, although the police typically use it to target married couples. Public expressions of affection are typically viewed as offensive behavior. People in India should therefore look for other ways to express their love for their significant other since public displays of affection might easily result in jail time. Makes me think about how many cops stop by a couple that's kissing and go, nah, -uh, you're coming with me. Thanks for watching. Leave a like and comment if you think we missed anything and we hope you have a scary day.